Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today is the third and concluding part of my build of the B26B Marauder in 148 scale from ICM. Now, in addition to completing the kit itself, I'm also adding some figures and putting them all onto a display base. I think it's probably the best work I've done, and I hope you enjoy watching the video. If you do, and you'd like to support the channel at no cost to yourself, then the best thing to do is subscribe. If you also hit the bell, then you'll be notified of all my future content as it's published. And of course, anything on my channel that you like, please do give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. If you would like to support the channel in a more concrete way, you can do that through my partner programs such as Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee and Ko-fi. Details of all of these are in the information box below. Right, so before we start showing you the end of the build, I'll just run you through the paints and products I've used this time. So the last thing we're going to do on this part of the build is put on the gun barbettes on the side of the fuselage. The guns go on here. Then there's a cover that goes over the barrel. So clips onto the front, gets glued on, and that's the barbette. There are four of these, and they go on the side of the aircraft, just behind the cockpit. And so this is the break in the build I, I have actually painted the nose here i'm going to keep it off paint paint this with the nose off because i need to put the machine gun in canopies all done primed the barbettes are on everything's closed up the bombays are done but i've put the bombay closed over here because i actually want to protect the bombay while i'm doing everything else uh mid upper turret that will come off as well for the paint job rear turret's looking good i'll put some um, masking tape and some liquid mask on that but everything's ready so this is all pretty much the fuselage done just needs priming and start the paint job it And so what I've, I've done here is I've painted the black stripes roughly where they should be because from the photos I've seen, they seem to do the black and then do the white. So I've painted the black stripes on with the um, AK pen, this one. Then I've marked out the white stripes with a uh, one of their weathering pens, a white weathering pencil. 
Um, so, so it looks vaguely like chalk marks, really. Now, from the photos I've seen, this stripe has been painted white. This stripe is kind of like half finished, so it sort of goes up, up there. This part is still sort of uh, olive drab and black and the chalk marks. And this bit hasn't been done at all. So that's what I'm going to paint. Paint this bit in and this bit in. I'll be using the white AK markers for that because it gives a, a nice kind of painted look if you see what well, you'll see what I mean in a minute. I don't know what I'm saying. You you'll see what I mean, but I'll show you what I mean. So if we this stripe is going to be done completely, so we it doesn't have to be too accurate, remember, because these things were marked up and painted on quite a lot. So we kind of just sort of roughly follow the line. But as you can see, if we do these bigger strokes, you see how it doesn't sort of block out the colour. It sort of looks painted on. Like someone's done it with a brush. That's exactly the look I'm going for. Exactly the look. So I'll get close, kind of close to that line. Um, I can always sort of finesse the line from this side with the black one as well. Um, and it goes over here. I'll just turn it around to do the other side of the invasion stripe. Okay, so we get a rough idea of where it's going. And then kind of infill with this stroke. Now, if you don't like the effect at first, let it dry add to it later okay this side is going to be the bit that it has actually just been freshly painted on let's finish that off Okay, and that's that's it. I might just touch up this bit because it's looking just a bit grey. I want it to actually be white, even if it's not a perfect. There you go. Now I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Now that side is that's how it's going to be. The other sides are the other side of the aircraft is is complete, but it's it's done with the same technique. Then we can just align up the wings and push them together. Just need to make sure that these spars go in the little channels that are provided in the moulding of the wings. Like that. There we go, like so. Then we can just press in this piece to fit into place, like that. The nose gear doors, if they're going to be open, need these little frames put in these have got like the supports that uh, clip into the side to let them hold the doors in place so just glue those on right there's a small actuator leg that goes in here but what I would do is just sort of keep it out of the way for the moment because we're then going to put in the main gear leg that goes in. Yeah, it slots into these little um, cups on the side there and there. Then this can into position down here, like so. The landing gear legs, oh sorry, the landing bay doors just slot in like this. There's a few little um, 
tiny little spots on the side that are receptacle for tiny pins on the side of the door. Then the nose wheel can go into place. Now, there is a ladder in here that goes in, but I'm not going to put that in yet because I'm actually going to have the ladder down. So I'm going to have that fitted when the aircraft's the right way up so it gets the right angle. I won't be able to do that now. The main gear leg, you need to add this, which is uh, the it's a two part thing. It's the suspension knee scissor for the Olio, but it's also got the uh, connectors here for opening the undercarriage bay doors. So they'll hold the doors in place when it's ready. And then on the other side, we just need to add this supporting framework part here like so and let that all set in and then we'll put the gear leg in okay this is slightly difficult to see but there's you can see there's a, a hole here in this uh, bracing part and behind it just behind that there, there's another hole that hole is where this bracing rod needs to go before it will slot into place in the base of the oh, which is in the roof isn't it is a roof of the bay it's a really tricky thing to get into place though. there we go there we go you'll know when it's done because it will suddenly slide into place and then this will sit in the slot automatically almost straight away like that and it's the same on this side as well then when everything's in we can put the undercarriage leg in it actually leans forwards a lot more than you would imagine it would so don't worry about it going in it leans forward it has to um, contact this these this cross brace here has to contact this arm here and that sort of sets the angle of the undercarriages it does lean forward quite a lot and then you can put the wheel onto the axle the gear doors just go onto these tabs on the side like so The Bombay doors, you have to put this piece in and kind of sits over a, a small tab just below the level of the Bombay door, I think about there. This one bracing arm goes in, there's two pins and two holes that they go into. So I can see why they say do the bomb bay doors early, but all this stuff hanging around while you're painting isn't normally a good idea. There we go. Isn't much of a good idea normally. So right, there we go, like that. Then we just fit the bomb doors to the bomb bay actuators like so then I'm going to put the propeller on the prop boss goes in the middle like so and then the propeller goes onto the pin there now I know there's a bit of stuff that's missing I'm just going to touch it up in a bit that's where it was attached to the frame I have assembled the five figures that come uh, but it, with the new release they actually come with the kit but I bought them as a separate pack the US Army Air Force air and ground crew figures there's three air crew figures and two ground crew figures now this guy here should have a little pouch with uh, some screwdrivers and stuff like that but what I've done is I found a paintbrush for him to hold from another kit so I put a paintbrush on his hand 
So these can all get painted up now and uh, I'll show you how I paint them in a bit. Uh, but first thing to do is, is to prime them, obviously. Here's the next step we just go over and put in some highlight areas. Oh no, sorry, these, these are the basic skin tones. So so we what we're doing is just sort of putting in some bits of uh, mid-tone. So that um, we've still got some shadow detail coming in. I like around the eyes and stuff but it's it's looking a bit more sort of sculpted okay and then after that when that's dry then we can put in some highlights for the display stand i've got a 40 by 30 centimeter picture frame inside it i've put a map of the d-day beaches i found at the imperial war museum website I looked into the 584th Bomber Squadron and on the night of 5th, 6th of June, they were tasked with attacking gun positions near Varville, behind Utah Beach. So I added an approach path to the town and a silhouette of a marauder. To fill in the remaining space, I used some American recruitment posters, two of which feature the B-26. I then placed the figures on and around the aircraft. There it is then. I'm happy to say that this is probably the best thing I've ever made. As I mentioned earlier, I'm enormously proud of it. Now, I hope you have enjoyed watching me this time round. If you have and you'd like to support the channel for free, then make sure you have subscribed. Hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. And of course, anything anywhere on my channel you like, please do remember, give it the old imperial thumbs up on that like button below because every like counts thank you so very much for watching today hope to see you again soon on the channel take good care now and goodbye